See no reason why the request should not be granted. Wrap your chops round this stick of tea. Blow this game and get high with me. Determined to get the act passed, Anslinger unleashed a media campaign to make the public believe that this little known plant growing at the side of rural roads was the biggest threat America had ever faced. Parents, beware. Your children, homeward bound from school, are being introduced to a new danger in the form of a drugged cigarette. Marijuana. A Chicago mother watching her daughter die as an indirect result of marijuana addiction told officers that at least 50 of the girl's young friends were slaves to the narcotic. Continuing addiction until they deteriorate mentally, become insane, and turn to violent crime and murder. Anslinger's campaign was tailor-made for the lurid tabloid press and supported by an army of moralist groups that captured the public's imagination. Movie Tone News, covering the world to bring you the news. He's a man that smokes that job, that job will take you for a time. Once it be still the night, when you smoke that kidney job. America is threatened by a new drug menace. Street corner vendors whose stock in trade is the deadly local weed marijuana pass it out in cigarette form. From ingeniously concealed containers, the reefers go to the waiting hands of deluded youngsters. Police find a city backyard full of dope. This innocent looking weed is Mexican marijuana, which when smoked produces more nightmares than opium. Captain Mooney of the Narcotics Squad will tell us something about it. The constant use of these marijuana cigarettes causes temporary insanity. Yes, Let's go, Jack. I'm red hot. State voted for the Uniform Narcotic Act, and so should yours. The propaganda campaign was successful beyond Anslinger's wildest dreams. One by one, state after state signed on. When you smoke that killing job. Gentlemen, take your seats. But now, Frightened out of their minds, the American public demanded that the federal government pass new laws to fight marijuana. Terrified voters wanted action, and their government responded. Without any public debate, scientific inquiry, or political objection, the Marijuana Tax Act was signed into law by President Roosevelt. The act prohibited possession of marijuana anywhere in the United States without a special tax stamp from the Treasury Department. And the Treasury Department didn't give out any stamps, effectively making marijuana illegal. Overnight, a new class of criminals was created.
to the Treasury agents of the Bureau of Narcotics comes the job of wiping out this traffic. And in 1937, we smashed 10 major narcotic rings. Only the cooperation of an awakened public can make, will make uh, the hell of it. The ladies crave the country's rave, this jive, jive, jive. This modern treat makes life complete. Jive, jive, jive. All the jive is gone. All the jive is gone. I'm sorry, Kate, but you got here late. All the jive is gone. All the jive is gone. All the jive is gone. So come on in and drink some gin. All the jive is gone. <laughs> The first person to be convicted was Samuel R. Caldwell, a 58-year-old Denver man. Sentencing him to four years hard labor at Leavenworth, Judge J. Foster Syme said, I consider marijuana the worst of all narcotics. Under its influence, men become beasts. In the future, I will impose the heaviest penalties. The government is going to enforce this new law to the letter. Prohibition cannot be enforced for the simple reason that the majority of American people do not want it enforced and are resisting its enforcement. That being so, the orderly thing to do under our form of government is to abolish a law which cannot be enforced, a law which the people of the country do not want enforced. New York's prohibition fighting mayor, Fiorello LaGuardia, was somewhat skeptical of the government's claims that marijuana was causing murder, rape, and the destruction of America's youth. Wanting to get the facts, he commissioned a study by a group of 31 impartial scientists. After six years of medical and sociological research, the LaGuardia Commission found smoking marijuana did not lead to violent or antisocial behavior. Smoking marijuana did not cause uncontrollable sexual urges. Smoking marijuana did not alter a person's basic personality structure. Item by item, the Commission's report disproved every negative effect claimed by Harry Anslinger. Furious, Anslinger used his influence with the press to have the report discredited and destroyed every copy he could get his hands on. And by restricting the supply of marijuana, he put a stop to any further research. Not taking any chances, Anslinger ordered his men to dig up dirt on anyone who disagreed with him. And going on the offensive, he targeted the entertainment industry, which he saw as a degenerate moral influence. 